Over the last 30 years? Over the past 30 years. Over the last 30 years. Over the last 30 years, we've learned that what you produce actually matters, and matters quite a lot. So we find that in economies that are producing more complicated, more sophisticated types of products that have a more diversified industrial base, they tend to grow faster, they tend to have higher incomes. This is what we've seen happen in Southeast Asia. But in other countries, uh, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa, the structural transformation over the last 15 years has been from agricultural jobs which are low productivity to slightly higher productivity jobs such as market services. And there's a huge missed opportunity here because it's manufacturing jobs that will create the real productivity growth. So the key things that we're looking into um, are relate very much to firm dynamics and the behaviour of firms in developing country contexts. And in particular understanding what are the triggers for them to grow and expand, what are the triggers for them to develop in terms of um, their productivity. And this is very much linked with industrial policy. So there, there are three main aspects. The first is that we have been looking at exporting behaviour and in particular what kinds of firms export and when they start to export what happens afterwards in terms of their productivity. In our research which covers a number of different sub-Saharan African countries and countries in Southeast East Asia we have found that exporting matters quite a lot. We find that more productive firms enter into export markets but once they start exporting they learn from this experience and they get even more productive. And the second thing that we have researched um, relates to foreign direct investment and in particular the impact that foreign direct investment has on local enterprises. What we would expect to find is that when foreign firms enter into a market that all firms benefit as a result of this, all local firms benefit as a result of this, that there's some kind of productivity spillover or learning or technology transfer that happens. And what we find is something new is that only through direct linkages with local firms does this learning actually happen. The third thing relates to agglomeration, and this is the natural tendency of firms to cluster together. So what we wanted to study was whether or not this actually leads to productivity spillovers and whether a good industrial policy is to cluster these firms together, for example, in special economic zones. And what we find is that there's two types of effects going on. On the one hand, there are agglomeration economies, so there are productivity benefits associated with cl locating close to other firms. Um, but on the other hand, if you're a very small firm and you're forced to locate in an urban centre, or in an industrial cluster, then you may in fact suffer. And it may in fact be a constraint to entrepreneurs starting new businesses or growing their businesses. So a kind of a dual policy is what would be required in that context. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years. Over the next 30 years, we would expect to see um, a huge amount of investment in infrastructure, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa. So there's a significant lack of infrastructure in sub-Saharan African countries. One of the main deficits in that regard is the power supply. So investing in getting reliable access to power is going to be a major investment that will have to be made in the years to come. The second um, major investment we might expect to see is in education. Um, so building the capabilities of firms and entrepreneurs is important, but also building the capabilities of the general population in order to take up higher productivity employment.